This video lesson goes with our assignment from Chapter 17, Dealing with Buffers. As I open my notepad from Chapter 17, we are finding the Buffered Solutions section, Section 17.2. Let's go ahead and find, on page 2, toward the bottom, our lesson on buffered videos in our notepad. Buffered solutions are solutions that resist changes in pH. A solution that resists a change in pH are known as buffered solutions. Solutions that can have strong acids or strong bases added and not have their pH change have been buffered. We see either a weak acid and its salt or a weak base and its salt creates a buffer. Notice that I have said they must come from weak acids or weak bases. That eliminates any type of buffered system coming from strong acids or strong bases. And we can make a buffer for any pH by simply varying the concentrations of these solutions. In our question, it asks us to consider which of the following conjugate acid-base pairs would not function as a buffer. Keeping in mind, buffers must come from weak acids or weak bases. So buffered systems must be made from weak conjugate pairs. When I look through our choices, it says HCOOH going to its conjugate base HCOO negative. This is the ionizing hydrogen. It is not one of our seven strong acids, therefore, yes, this set of conjugate pairs would form a buffer. Bicarbonate ion and carbonate ion are conjugate pairs. They differ by only one hydrogen ion. Neither is coming from a strong parent, so yes, that conjugate acid-base pair would function as a buffer. However, nitric acid and its conjugate base nitrate comes from a strong acid. This would not work in terms of functioning as a buffer. So to answer our question, it's the last one that would not function as a buffered system. Nitric acid is strong and therefore would not work to buffer a solution. Let's consider how buffers work. If a buffer is composed of a weak acid and its conjugate base coming from the first name of a salt, the conjugate acid HX and one of its salt MX. Notice from the last lesson we have a common ion. In terms of a weak acid it would be the anion. Let's write the dissociation for this weak acid. If HX, representing just general formula for any weak acid, dissociates, it would produce the hydrogen ion and its anion called X negative. If we write the corresponding acid dissociation expression, its products over reactants, we would find that the Ka is found by multiplying the hydrogen ion times the negative X ion all over the value of the molecular form of the acid HX. Ka represents the ions over molecules, the dissociated over the undissociated form of our acid. If we simply rearrange solving for hydrogen, naming the same uh, equation, just putting hydrogen equals, so manipulating with algebra to make hydrogen ion, it would solve out to be the Ka times Hx all over the X negative. The Hx represents the molecular form of the acid and the X negative represents its conjugate base. We have manipulated Ka equal to H plus times X negative over Hx and just solve for hydrogen ion, placing it to the left of the equal. And what happens, we have Ka multiplied by Hx divided by the X negative simplifies algebraically our formula. We'll need to flip our page in our notes, so it asks, what do we have? If H plus and therefore pH are determined by two factors, 
we could see the value of Ka playing a role. The value of the weak acid has its own unique Ka value. And we also see a ratio of the conjugate acid-base pair, Hx over its conjugate base, x negative. And again, that's just simply coming from rearranging the original Ka equation. So from our previous page, if the hydrogen ion can be found by knowing Ka and the conjugate acid-base ratio, we can see two factors affecting the pH of our solution. The pH could be affected by the magnitude of the Ka, and it could be affected by the ratio of the concentrations of the acid to its conjugate base. So, as long as we have this ratio of Hx to x negative, the acid to its conjugate base, if it's very large compared to the amount of hydrogen or hydroxide we add, the ratio doesn't change much, and thus the change in pH is quite small. So, Ka is a constant. We can't change that. But we could add to a solution large amounts of the conjugate pair of Hx and X negative so that they are there ready to absorb excess amounts of acid or base. Let's give it some thought. What happens when sodium hydroxide is added to a buffer composed of acetic acid and its conjugate base acetate, knowing that the acetate ion would have to come from one of its salts, perhaps sodium acetate or potassium acetate. We do need a source of the negative ion, generally coming from some salt. So if we have a buffer system consisting of acetic acid and acetate, NaOH is a strong base. Knowing that we have an acid and its conjugate base, if we pour in sodium hydroxide to a system that's buffered, and the buffer is the acid and its conjugate base, we would recognize that NaOH would react with the acid portion of the buffer. NaOH with acetic acid would provide us, and again, just a double displacement, with NaC2H3O2 and water, HOH. Now, thinking this through, the driving force here, the sodium ion, of course, acting as a spectator, we could also write that in terms of a net ionic equation. When a base is added to a weak acid, I'm seeing an increase in the amount of acetic acid's conjugate base, whoops, that's a negative one, and water, C2H3O2, negative one. I'll repair that best I can. C2H3O2, negative one, the acetate polyatomic ion. So all we've done is eliminated the sodium as a spectator. When a base is added to a buffered system, the acid is there waiting to help absorb the excess amounts of hydroxide being added. If I think about this in terms of a bar graph, let's suppose I have equal amounts of the conjugate acid, I'll call Hx, and its base, X negative. And in this system, let's just visualize acetic acid in this particular area and the acetate ion in this area. If we were to add strong base, we see that the acid gets consumed and the acetate gets made. Visually, we can show that as the amount in a bar graph of the original value here. Keep in mind, I'm just trying to do a bar graph. If the acetate ion went down, we end up looking something like this. The Hx value is a smaller amount, and the X negative value is an increased amount. Now what I'm trying to show in a bar graph, the added value of acetate to this region here of the original amount should be equal to the Hx value that has been decreased. That the amount X went up is equal to the amount Hx that was consumed. Adding a strong base 
created more base and less acid. Let's consider what happens when HCl is added to the buffer. The same buffered system, but this time we're adding acid. If HCl is a strong acid and our buffered pair is hydrogen acetate and the acetate ion, acid reacts with base. Let's consider HCl, and again, let's just write the net ionic and I'll eliminate the spectator chloride. So HCl will be represented as H+. Plus. We'll add that to the base, the conjugate base, H, excuse me, C2, H3, O2, negative. And we could see the formation of more acetic acid. Let's consider in the same bar graph the opposite direction. If I add strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, to a system that's being buffered, and again, HX is representing acetic acid, the acetate is being represented by X negative, a conjugate acid-base pair. If I add more H positive, we saw, in terms of the bar graph, the amount of acid that was produced going up, and again, considering the equal amounts here, the amount of base that was consumed going down. We made more HX and we used up X negative. We made more acetic acid as the acetate was consumed. The amount that HX went up in value is equal to the amount that X negative was consumed. So buffered systems start out equal. And if I add base to a solution, I'm ready to absorb that excess base with the acid. The acid gets used and the conjugate base goes up. If I add to this conjugate pair excess acid, it's the acid value that goes up and the base goes down. Visually, you could see the more conjugate pair, the higher the bar graph here that we start with, the better the buffering capacity of our solution. To calculate the pH of a buffer, we revisit our initial equation for Ka. I remember Ka is equal to the products over reactants. So we have H plus times X negative all over HX, where this is true for any weak acid. We also rearranged to solve for the hydrogen ion and thus pH by showing it was the same as writing Ka times the hydrogen X over X negative, the conjugate acid base pair. So therefore, we see H concentration depending upon the ratio of the acid to its conjugate base, the concentration ratio of acid over base. We could take negative log of both sides, and we do so to turn hydrogen ion into something we're more familiar with, pH. If I find Hydrogen ion's value is negative log, that's where the pH comes from, so we'll just simply write pH as the negative log now of hydrogen ion.